All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. We're doing something a little bit different today. We are gonna be smoking a couple of pork butts, but we're uh, not really gonna focus so much on the pork butt itself. What we're gonna be focusing on here is just the technique on the new Camp Chef XXL Pro. So what we've got going on for that setup is we are running some Bear Mountain Oak pellets and within the uh, smoke fault itself, which these have already started smoldering, there what we're running is the hickory barbecue wood chunks from this Western premium barbecue products company. So that's what we're going to be running in the smoke box just to kind of get a little bit of a blend of the two different woods. Both go great on pulled pork, but you know, in this case, we're going to get that little bit of a stronger hickory flavor because of that smoke box itself. So uh, I've got this running at 225. This was, it went through its entire startup process and I let it get up to temperature. And that's when I checked on the wood chunks themselves and they were already starting to smolder and get uh get smoky so I think that it's about time that we're gonna go ahead and close this valve down to about halfway and then I'm gonna just keep an eye on it from there about every 30 to 45 minutes I'm gonna check in on it see what it's doing and if we have to add chunks go ahead and if we have to open that valve back up we'll do that as well so let's go ahead and just get these pork butts on then and get rocking with some smoke on these butts now for these butts using two different seasonings one of them is a meat church seasoning that I'm using for it and the other is a Cosmo Q's, it's the Dirty Bird. So we're gonna be trying both of these out today on the new XXL Pro. All right, and so now that I've got both of these butts inside of the smoker, I've got them both probed. Quick note for when you're putting these probes in, you wanna make sure that you're not hitting bones. So that'll be an obvious feeling. It's gonna be hard, it's not gonna be anything like the meat. So just make sure that you're not hitting any of the bone because that'll give you an inaccurate temperature. But so once we've got these put in, like I said, all we're gonna do is close this up and keep an eye on it for every, uh, you know, 35, 45 minutes to an hour or so, just to keep uh, an eye on it. There's some smoke coming out right from underneath there. That's coming directly from that smoke box. So obviously that wood is doing its thing and that's what this uh, Cam Chef XXL Pro is, uh, is going to do really well at, so I'm excited for it. As you can see, I did add some gasket around the door because that was obviously, you know, uh, a source of a major leak. So I'm keeping it on for now. I'll see how it goes from, from there. But yeah, so now that we've got that on there, uh, we're just going to, like I said, let that go for about 30 to 45 minutes before I check on it again, just to see what it's doing. We'll uh, probably spritz the pork butts about every that that time period as well just to keep it moist and uh, let a bark develop but beyond that that's all we're going to do pork butts are super easy they're super forgiving so um, i'm not concerned that this is going to go off in any sort of way but it's going to be interesting to see how this this technique and this cam chef xxl pro can uh can do a pork butt so super excited stick with me here shouldn't be a long video this time but uh you know it'll show some results that that this camp chef xxl can put out all right so after about uh 30 to 40 minutes here checking back in on this smoke box and as you can see there they have all pretty much turned to coal but they've also burned out so we've got to add some fresh wood in here to keep the smoke rolling so that's what i'm doing now and I think we're going to have to check back in on this a little more often than 45 minutes. I'm going to check again in 30 minutes and see where that's at. But you can already see the smoke has already started to uh, kind of flare up on those new chunks that we just put in there. So just go ahead and slide that back in. Let it do its thing. Next thing that I want to check on is just these pork butts. So already starting to look good. I'm going to pull this out a bit just so that I can get some spritz on all of them here. All right, and so all this spritz really is here is just a 50-50 mixture of apple cider vinegar and apple juice. So that's all I'm spritzing it with. Now that they're looking nice and glistening, go ahead and push those right back in and let the smoke keep rolling. Okay, so at about the 30 minute mark again, gonna check in on this smoke vault. And again, as you can see, burned up. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more chunks in here. And all I'm gonna really be able to fit in here is a couple of smaller ones. But now that those are added in, and obviously that's been 
probably lit all on its own. I'm going to close the damper here that's over that fire pot completely and just let this smolder on its own. Now, this is when it's going to become critical to actually check this and make sure that it's still lit. Only because if you have this closed up, then that fire is not getting through up into this actual smoke ball chamber itself. So then you got to make sure that you're keeping an eye on it and keeping that fire fed. Otherwise, it's going to die out and then you're going to have to open this back up. And I tried that before and it seems like it doesn't like to light up once it's not on its startup mode. So like I said, keep the fire lit, tend to it, and uh, you should let it keep going. So I don't know, I think we're about maybe an hour, hour and a half in. Those pork butts are up to 62 degrees each. We've been rocking at that steady 225. Quick point about that as well. Just like with the, uh, the DLX that I had, you want to keep this on a smoke level 7, only because it keeps the temperatures very stable at that point. You're still getting the added benefit of that higher smoke flavor. Obviously, the smoke vault is going to do uh, most of the heavy lifting for that. But it's been keeping that temperature really close to the 225 mark. It's at 226 right now, but it's been keeping it very close to that, and it hasn't really been uh, deviating much off of it. So highly recommend that you keep that at a 7. You seem to get more uh, temperature fluctuations at that 8, 9, 10 mark. So again, we'll check back in in about a half hour and see where we're at. All right, so we are almost four hours in. We have been feeding this, like I said, about every 30 minutes. So far, it's looking good right now. I'm going to leave that as is before adding any more, probably in about, uh, about another half hour for that. Um, it has slowed down in terms of how long it's needed to be refilled once I've closed this damper. So that's definitely good to know. Um, it hasn't been had to be fed uh, you know, as often as that 30 minute mark, but obviously still needs to be fed as it burns out. The uh, next thing that we're going to do here is just go ahead and take a look at this pork. And we are getting some really, really nice color on that. So I'm definitely pleased with that. And we are definitely getting some really nice color on those. So I'm definitely pleased with how that's turning out so far. But obviously, we've got to go ahead and give this a spritz. And main point here is just to try to get all the exposed sides that you can get. Go ahead and just slide these right back in and give it another maybe 30 to 45 minutes before we check on the wood. All right, also we are at the uh, 10 and a half hour mark. And uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. I would absolutely say that. So what we're gonna do now, since these are uh, saying that they're probing at 161 and 158, I'm gonna give this a probe myself on the instant read. And yeah, pretty close to that. 158, that was bone, 154, 161. So um, just because they are looking really good, I'm happy with the mark. I'm going to go ahead and get these wrapped up. So I'm going to put these in an aluminum pan, cover them with some aluminum foil, and uh, finish them off in there, bring them home here. We don't want these to go way too long either. So let's go ahead and do that, and then... You know, we'll check back in a little later. Good morning, everybody. It is 10 minutes before 3 in the morning. These were pulled off at about 10.30 last night. Um, so that's about 14 hours that these were on. And so they've been resting up until now. Um, the reason why I'm up so early and didn't push these a little bit further and just in general is just because I am going to be freezing these and reheating these for a party on Saturday. So it doesn't really matter when they get done, but this is just kind of when it worked out. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these popped open and get a look at them, see what we're working with. Right, so now, I mean, the first thing that immediately hits you with these is just the smell. They smell amazing, honestly. This, uh, this Cam Chef XXL Pro just puts out amazing smoke. And this bone's popping out already from here. This one's all smashed only because the cooler's not big enough for me to lay them side by side. So this one had to sit on top of this one. It is what it is. I mean, this is going to get shredded, but it's obviously in a, you know, mashed down. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into these. I don't know which, one, which of these are which now. I think that this is the Cosmo Q one, and I think that this is the Meat Church one. Um... It doesn't really matter to me at the end of the day. More than likely, I think these are all going to get combined into one pan as it is. So let's just go ahead and start shredding this up. 
but I mean, that's probably the cleanest bone pull that I've ever had. I mean, there's, there's one speck to really peel off here. So, you know, that speaks for itself. Let's see how the second bone comes out. And, you know, not as easily as the first, but just as clean. So there's that. All right, let's go ahead and start shredding this. I mean, the color on this, the bark, just absolutely amazing. Let's give this a try. This is still nice and warm. That cooler kept pretty well. So that I'm pretty, pretty happy with. But I mean, just this, this is just falling apart legitimately so while i'm shredding this obviously you know i'm not so much focused on flavor and whatnot here obviously that's important texture obviously important just the strategy and the game plan with the xxl pro so that was obviously done from 225 from the start adding those hickory chunks at the beginning a little bit more often and then later on less often but so Kept the 225 the entire time, other than towards the end when I did bump it up to 250. I didn't mention in the video, but I will uh, link that in there. Or you should be it should have been by now been able to see where I basically added in the information that I am uh, bumping the temperature up. So not really anything different than you do with a regular pellet smoker, other than maybe you start off a little bit lower. Beyond that, oh, that's a good looking piece. But beyond that, there really wasn't much to adjust to get it to do its thing and get it to do it well. Um, obviously, pieces like this, like this is all just fat. I pulled this stuff out of pulled pork because it's kind of gross in the sandwich in general, for me at least. So I pulled that kind of stuff out of this. The XXL Pro, obviously, you know, I don't want to say exceeding expectations, but compared to a regular pellet smoker pulled pork this is night and day all right all so that's really going to be the end of the video i'm going to finish up with getting these shredded up and then letting them cool down a bit and then get these put into some vacuum sealed bags and then seal them up before we go ahead and get them into the freezer and then uh hopefully be able to get some sleep till the morning time so thank you so much for watching we're going to do, be doing more videos like this on the xxl pro so stay tuned and let me know what you guys thought of this. Please like, comment, subscribe, and let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me cook on the XXL Pro. So thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Okay, 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 okay. I should probably do a taste test between these two as well. So I'm just going to sprinkle on some more of the seasoning from each respective one. So again, this one is the Meat Church. This is the holy gospel barbecue rub so just toss in the rest of what i've got in here and i've got just about the same amount of the cosmo q dirty bird which is also pork rub that can be used so sprinkle the rest of this on as well and then we'll give this a mix all right so here's a piece of the meat church that's a good flavor it's got just a little hint of something sweet in there but overall good barbecue flavor cosmos q Need a second bite of that. So I think I like the Cosmo Q's better. Something about it, I think it might be just a tad bit more salty than the Holy Gospel rub. So I think that that's what's doing it. But the Cosmo Q's just, like I said, it seems to have a little bit of a heavier salt content. And I think that that's what's doing it uh, justice and making it taste a little bit better. Um, so if I had to choose between the two, Cosmo Q's would be the way to go. Uh, but the Meat Church, obviously also really good. Make your own barbecue rubs. Try some of these out. Try out some of the other ones that these two companies have in their lines. They're both great companies. They both have great rubs. Just depends on your taste. So the only way you're going to find out is by trying them yourself. But for me, Cosmo Q's Dirty Bird is the way to go.